Alright, so I've been gone for about eight months, but I won't make it weird if you don't. Alright, so our goal today is to rank every mainline game in the Crash Bandicoot series in preparation for every individual Crash Bandicoot video I will eventually do. So, I'm going to pop up the games I'll be talking about here. If you don't see the game that you like on this list, I'm probably not going to be talking about it for quite some time. Without further ado, let's get started you guys. There's a reason that I have no footage of Mind Over Mutant. I don't own the game and I haven't for a long time. Coming off the heels of a pretty decent beat em up, Mind Over Mutant feels like it took Crash of the Titans and just shit all over it. And since I can't show that kind of thing on YouTube, this is what you get. A blurred out reel of Crash of the Titans footage because that was the best way I could think to depict this game while discussing it. I think the varying art styles and cutscenes are cool, and the game does have one singular line that I really enjoy from Nitrous Brio, but outside of this, I really can't think of any merit that the title has. Sorry if you grew up with this one, but I hope the trip to trade it in at GameStop was a fun one. I really, really, really wanted to like this one. Everyone in the Crash Bandicoot community is clamoring for a remake of this game, but after giving it a try on my streaming anniversary last year, I just couldn't get behind it. It's too dumb. And I know that's a little negative for a kid's game, but I just, like, Look at this. Crash! Crash! Where are you, big brother? There's something weird going on in the bay! Come see! I think even when I was five, this humor just wasn't gonna cut it. A bright side to this game that I do want to point out is that the music is simply fantastic. The acapella band Spiral Mouth did all the songs for the soundtrack, and it just goes so hard. Okay, okay, before you throw me off the nearest cliff, I just want you to hear me out. Having the newest mainline entry in the Crash series this low on the list doesn't necessarily mean I think it's a horrible game. The art style, controls, and storyline of It's About Time are everything I could have asked for in a Crash game in the year 2020. However, I really think that Toys for Bob and I don't see eye to eye on what a Crash Bandicoot experience should look like at its core. These games have always been difficult from a completionist standpoint, but what always got me hooked when it came to the original trilogy was the ability to choose your own difficulty. If you didn't want to collect everything the game had to offer, you didn't have to and you could still have a middle of the road experience in the end. Crash Bandicoot 4 doesn't want you to have that middle of the road experience. When I streamed the game on Twitch, I hit roadblocks that I had never experienced in any Crash game. Mind you, I've completed the original trilogy and the Endsane trilogy to 100% prior to this, so I know what it's supposed to feel like. But this was something completely different. On top of a grueling normie playthrough, if you want to collect everything there is to collect, I hope you don't have a day job or anything, because the boxes are placed in ask 9 locations that even experienced players would have trouble finding. And the game expects you to also want to do each and every level in reverse on top of that. Throw in new character play styles, platinum relics, and I gotta tell you, this game was not meant to be played for fun. I don't know what they were thinking, maybe they saw the Rage compilations from 2017 and wanted to increase that number by a bunch, but if that's what they were going for then they succeeded. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels this way. Okay, now that the hard part's over, how about something a little more laid back? I know a lot of Crash fans dislike Crash's new design, but I think it was a refreshing change in an era of gaming where a lot of console mascots were going for something a little more unique. It isn't horrible to look at, and even if you don't like it, Crash of the Titans offers a plethora of other character skins to cover up those tattoos. This entry is a beat-em-up game that allows you to control genetically modified animals known as Titans. It's equal parts combat and platforming, which is such a nice change of pace for the series. It sees you attempting to rescue Coco and defeating all of your adversaries by making effective use of the different powers each Titan possesses. I found this playthrough to be fun and enjoyable with its only downside being that it seemed to still have a tinge of Twinsanity's humor, which isn't suited to my taste as I said earlier. I also can't stand the way that Crash talks in this game.
It's no secret that your boy loves this entry in the Crash Bandicoot series. This is the game that I feel deserves a remake for what we got in the 2000s. Where many see a rehash of old mechanics from Warped, I see a leap into the 6th generation of consoles. We got a new set of enemies and Crunch and the Elementals, not to mention the stellar lineup of voice talent who voiced the masks, including Mark Hamill as Pyro. We also finally got playable Coco sections that weren't vehicle sections, though even I could admit that it was a little annoying that Crash and Coco play so differently in this game. I've had my fair share of online arguments where people bash the game for being unoriginal and uninspired, but you have to give props to Traveler's Tales who were under some tight deadlines to get this game out. For what we got, I say the Crash Bandicoot IP was still in pretty decent standing in 2001. A little more time in the oven and I think we could have had a really amazing game. As for the present day, I still think it could make a hell of a remake if Activision was up to it. Now we're in PS1 territory and it's really no surprise that this run of Crash games is going to be top in the list. Cortex Strikes Back is one of the first games I ever remember playing. However, it has consistently been in my least favorite of the original trilogy. To which credit, it did away with the archaic map system of the first game and allowed players to save manually. The addition of the slide move also served to give the player more options when bobbing and weaving around obstacles or trying to get extra height. I think the only thing that falls flat for me with this game is that the story feels a tad bit convoluted, and while I understand it now, it confused me as a kid. Were we really helping Cortex all of a sudden? And why couldn't Coco reach us? Hell, who even was Coco? She certainly wasn't in the first game and we don't quite get a backstory for her creation. But I mean, let's be honest, nobody's playing Crash Bandicoot for the fucking story anyway. Solid game overall. Warped was everything 2 was, but polished and more colorful somehow. As a kid, the story made sense to me, and Entropy being the midpoint boss really raised the stakes as Cortex relayed to you the consequences of messing with the Time Twister. I love the different level themes and the introduction to the time trials to further perfect the way I play the game. Power-ups are also a welcome addition that even further expands Crash's moveset. This game also allows you to play as Coco, albeit only in vehicle sections. When I want a game to kick back and relax to, it tends to be this one, and I could see why it's widely acclaimed as one of the best games in the series. The one that started it all, as they say. A lot of content creators put this high on their list for this simple fact. However, I don't think that just because an entry marks the inception of a franchise, that we should immediately give it a top slot. Hell, Spyro's a good example of that. I've had an interesting love-hate relationship with Crash Bandicoot over the years. I used to outright hate it and wanted to switch to something easier like Spyro as a kid. But through my teen years and especially my early 20s, this game has taught me the importance of perseverance. One of my favorite platinum trophies in the Insane Trilogy, this game has earned its spot for the calluses it's given me in my hands and the challenge it's imprinted in my mind. An honest to god reminder that anything is possible. Well guys, that's all I have for you this time. Please remember that these are obviously my own thoughts and feelings on the series so far, and I'd love to hear yours in the comments. If you feel like any of these entries are too short, try to keep in mind that each one of these games is getting its own designated video at some point down the line. Well, except Mind Over Mutant, you really couldn't pay me to play that piece of shit. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. If you're interested in the kind of games I cover, I stream every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday on Twitch. The link is down in the description below, and thank you guys for watching.